Did you did you have any concerns about it being, um, you know, a, a, a real, a, a difficult thing for an audience to grasp, or did it feel that it was something that people could grasp? Well, it's like it, you know. I mean. <laughs> Congrats, Mr. Christopher Nolan, or should I say Sir Christopher Nolan, on your knighthood. His wife, it's my understanding she's involved in a lot of his films as a producer, got the female version of knighthood as well, which is called a damehood. So congrats to her. My dog just jumped on my lap. <laughs> Love you, Parker. You can share with your dad to you as he goes through the podcast. Miles, sorry, I don't have as much room for you. And... Re- honor of this amazing honor that the Nolans have received, I would like to have a Christopher Nolan-centric episode. He's really my favorite director, or at least he's definitely up there. Let's go over his top 10 highest grossing films. And then after this, after I do that, I'll do a Mount Rushmore of my favorite Christopher Nolan films. So number 10 on the list is Prestige, The Prestige. It grossed $109 million and it came out in 2006. With Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. Honestly, I've never seen this film. So if you've seen it, let me know in the comments what you think. Insomnia, it comes in at number nine. It came out in 2002 and it had a gross of 113 million. Again, I haven't seen that one. Number eight I have seen is Tenant. Tenant came out in 2020 and had a worldwide gross of 365 million. For those of you who don't remember, Tenant came out during the pandemic. So a lot of people couldn't go out to see it. If anything, people went out to see it in spite of the pandemic and it did pretty well. The only thing I have bad to say about this film was the sound was kind of off in the theater. I was talking to my, uh, I'm looking to get some speakers in a home and set up a home theater. And I was talking to the guy and I was like, I want the speakers to really like pop, but I want to be able to change it. Because for example, and I referenced uh, Tenet, I would love to turn the bass down in Tenet because it was a little much. The film was really fun, though. It had awesome action. I, I love the concept of Tenet, the time travel aspect of it. It was really cool. It was a little sporadic and hard to follow, but I did enjoy it, which is kind of like similar to um, Inception. That was kind of hard to follow, but it was really fun. So Tenet comes in at number eight on the list. Number seven on the list. How many Batman movies do you think made the top ten? Come on. Number seven on the list is Batman Begins, which came out in 2005 and had a worldwide gross of $375 million. That's pretty good. Interesting fact that I learned the other day is Jake Gyllenhaal said that he was one of the final people to audition for this role of Bruce Wayne, which he obviously lost out to Christian Bale. He said Christopher Nolan called him personally to apologize and let him know that he didn't win the role. I thought that was really nice of Christopher Nolan. Like, this guy just crushes it. I think the Batman trilogy is up there with the best comic book trilogy ever made. Coming in at number six is Dunkirk. Dunkirk had a worldwide gross of $350 million, and it came out in 2017. I have seen Dunkirk. I thought it was really good. I don't typically like these kind of movies, but Christopher Nolan is one of those directors where... It's like even if he does a film that's not your typical style like these war movies, because you like his style, it works for you. Chris Reeves is like that too. The Chris's man. <laughs> so yeah, I did like this film. Now we're in the top five of Christopher Nolan worldwide grosses. Not the, his highest rated. This is just the top five most successful films he's had at the box office. This dog is just all over the place. Can you name the top five? I want to give you a second. If you can name which top five movies these will be, which movies will be in the top five, whatever, however you want to say it. I'll give you a second. It doesn't have to be in order. Just which five movies do you think made this list? Okay, you got it. Let's start with number five, which was Interstellar. Came out in 2014. Interstellar made $731 million. Another fun fact that I learned recently is Anne Hathaway said that she had a lot of trouble getting work because I guess she had a bad reputation for whatever reason. I don't know. And she said she always appreciated Christopher Nolan for giving her a chance on this film. She killed it. This was one of the first films 
I really saw Matthew McConaughey as an excellent dramatic actor because he was kind of known for like the hot rom-com guy. You know what I mean? But he crushed it. Interstellar is one of my favorite movies of all time. Forget sci-fi because it, it is. Yeah. But in general, any kind of movie I've ever seen, Interstellar is number one. Uh, not number one, but it's up there. Unreal film. The When he goes back and he's like behind the bookcase and with all these like aliens and stuff i guess i don't know what they are i didn't really understand that part but i thought it was really cool when he finds out that he missed his daughter's life and that scene at the end with i guess an old anne hathaway where she's like i knew you'd come back and he said how did you know and then she's like my daddy told me there's not one person who saw this movie and didn't cry come on you don't have to have a heart of stone to not cry during interstellar I'll have more to say about that when I go to my Mount Rushmore. Number four is Inception. Came out in 2010. It had a worldwide gross of $839 million. Seriously. Inception was the biggest mind F of any film I've ever seen. It was ridiculously hard to follow. I think a lot of people didn't understand what was going on, but they didn't want to say that they didn't because they didn't want to sound stupid. I understood it, though. (laughs) Number three on our list is his latest film, Oppenheimer, with a worldwide gross of $953 million. The fact that this is like a three-plus-hour film where people just talk about physics, basically, and it made that much money is incredible, and it just speaks volumes of his kind of skill as a director. Now we're on to the final two. Guaranteed you would know this next film would be up there. If you didn't, then... Just unsubscribe. You're stupid. <laughs> Joking. Don't unsubscribe. 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 That's a tongue twister. Number two on the list is The Dark Knight. Came out in 2008 and had a worldwide gross of $1.02 billion. Fun fact, this film actually is what made Timothy Chalamet want to be an actor. He said it during his Dune presser. We are finally there. The number one highest grossing film of Christopher Sir Christopher Nolan's career is The Dark Knight Rises came out 12 years ago in 2012 and had a worldwide gross of 1.11 billion dollars I'm surprised he doesn't have more billion dollar films to be honest Oppenheimer is definitely going to get a re-release and then cross that threshold I think Tenet would have hit a billion as well if it had not come out during the pandemic so going through this list was good because I kind of remembered all his movies and I could think of what I would want to be on my Mount Rushmore of Christopher Nolan movies. So I would say, now for those of you who don't know, there's four heads on Mount Rushmore. So when you say you're a Mount Rushmore of movies, you got to pick four. I would say, let me go scroll through this quickly. I would say Tenant, Interstellar, Oppenheimer, and The Dark Knight. And if I had to go in order, I would say The Dark Knight, number one, you had to have uh, Interstellar, number two, Tenant, number three, and Oppenheimer, number four. Oppenheimer was great. It was just a little long for me. That's the only thing. But the whole hype around that film and the Barbenheimer phenomenon, I just loved all of it. The Dark Knight has got to be the greatest superhero film ever made. Or at the very least, it belongs in a tier where you can have a discussion about it. That film was so good. The Joker, performed by Heath Ledger, is one of the most inspiring performances I've ever seen in a comic book film. He just crushed it. It's so heartbreaking, the path that Heath Ledger's, I guess you could say, life took, where he ended up dying, unfortunately. That guy had so much potential. I feel so bad for him and his family And whenever I think about it. You have Interstellar, which is... I, I would say Interstellar and The Dark Knight are interchangeable, So whatever one of those would be my favorite Christopher Nolan film. They're just so good. Oh, incredible. I don't even know. I don't even know if I could watch Interstellar again and not cry. If you've seen Interstellar and not cried, let me know in the comments. I want to give you some props because that is hard to do. (laughs) There's just so many good Christopher Nolan movies to choose from. But I'd have to go with The Dark Knight, Tenet, Interstellar, and Oppenheimer as my Mount Rushmore of Nolan movies. The guy is just a straight up G. He should be called Sir G. Christopher Nolan. Unreal. Congratulations to you and your family on the amazing accomplishment of 
Nighthood. I can't wait to see what you do next. You're an amazing, amazing director. And from the stories that I've read and heard, you seem like a great guy too. If you're ever in Toronto and want to grab a beer, Sir Christopher Nolan, hit me up. Thank <laughs> you.